How would you define femininity? I found it's a vague concept that's hard to hold to any one definition. The Oxford Dictionary defines it as feminine quality, the characteristic, quality, or assemblage of qualities pertaining to the female sex, womanliness. However, that's not how I would define femininity. Femininity is something I have struggled to define and accept for myself, as I always felt afraid to be perceived as weak or less than my peers because of my stereotypically feminine interests, such as liking the color pink or enjoying discussing fashion. This is something I found many of my female peers struggle with, and a valid concern for most of them. In a study from 2008 by Eric Anderson, it was found that men in team sports devalue femininity. Anderson's research credits this to historical processes and cultural models. Gender stereotypes that favor masculinity can be found in many cultures, such as those in Japan and the United States. These stereotypes encourage more active, individualized roles for men in society compared to women, who are stereotyped into more passive roles, according to Hofstede's 2001 study. Redefining femininity is how I decided to combat the judgment I felt. If you're unsure how to do this, you're not alone. I struggled to do so for a long time. It took me years to realize that the version of myself I was projecting wasn't who I wanted to be and didn't align quite right with my values. Because of this, I decided to look at what femininity means to me. I looked at people who I believed to be feminine and why I thought that about them. I looked at these characteristics and thought about which ones I already exhibited and which ones I wanted to exhibit more. These characteristics for me were caring for others, genuineness, and respect. But they'll be different for you. These are not exclusively feminine traits. However, to me, they felt more in line with my feminine side. Writer Roxana Azimi also looked at what femininity means to her in her article, It's Time to Stop Femininity Shaming. She states, femininity can mean strength and independence. It can mean compassion, empathy, and vivacity. It can mean intuition, creativity, and success. This is how I decided to go about embracing my typically feminine characteristics. I then worked to embrace my more feminine interests. As a child, I loved all things pink and princesses. And that never really stopped. I just learned what the people I wanted to be friends with accepted more. I tried to forget about these girly interests from when I was younger and favored more masculine interests, such as contact sports. While I do love many masculine things, I realized that I was using them as a way to hide my characteristics and interests that felt most true to myself. I had this mindset that I would be judged for liking these things. I want you to think honestly to yourself. Are there things you're suppressing for fear of judgment? If you met me for the first time today, you would quickly realize that my favorite color is pink, I love discussing fashion, and I have what some might say is an absurd amount of floral print in my closet, all typically feminine things. However, I realized that this is nothing to be ashamed about. I realized, though, that this stemmed from moments in middle school where I felt like if I were to wear pink or a dress, I would be seen as feminine and nothing more interesting than that. I wanted to be seen as strong, smart, and independent, and not just some girly girl. This is why redefining femininity for you is so important, so you can feel confident when being feminine and not just like some stereotype. I've, as I've grown, I've found, as have many of you, that we can credit this to the way media portrays feminine women. In a 1995 study, it was found that female politicians are either portrayed favorably or unfavorably based on how they fit with gender roles. In many studies, but specifically one by Michelle C. Bly, it was found that women in positions of power are generally more disliked because their authority and ambition are not in line with traditional gender roles. In a 2007 study, it was found that when video games stories were analyzed, that what, quote, characters said about femininity is that women should be extreme physical specimens, visions of beauty, objects of men's heterosexual fantasies, and less important than men. Because of this, my mindset was, if the point of being feminine is just to appease the male gaze, then I don't want to be feminine. It was confusing to then start to embrace my femininity because I wasn't doing it for anyone but myself. 
but I realized that the point of being feminine wasn't about becoming the most feminine person I knew, it was about embracing the feminine characteristics and not being ashamed of them. If you're struggling to embrace your masculinity, this process can also be done for that. It's important to find a balance between your feminine and masculine sides. It's not going to be a 50-50 balance, and it'll be different for everyone. But by finding, striking a balance between your feminine and masculine sides, you can feel more empowered in yourself. The last thing I want to talk about is other people's perceptions of you because of your femininity. I don't think people's perceptions of overly feminine women have changed, and there are still people who will see pink and sparkles and nothing more. But by embracing femininity for you, you can feel more empowered in being feminine. My thoughts went from being, do they think I'm weird, to sounding more like, today I feel really great. I stopped caring about what people might say regarding my femininity and started caring more about loving and accepting myself. Listening to my journey with my femininity, I want to ask you again, how would you define femininity? You don't have to know the answer right now or even this week, but take the time to think about it and lean into it. Lean into the empowerment you get through your redefinition of femininity. Thank you.